Hey, that wasn't too bad, was it? What a cool tool. And if you set it up so that it's just sitting there in the corner, you'll be able to check in. And of course, as soon as we give you an update in terms of the 30 day challenge, and remember, the fastest way to get any information about the 30 day challenge will be through our Twitter feed, then it makes it simple and you don't have to go off and check somewhere else. And we're going to come back uh, to, we'll do a separate setup on Facebook after we've shown you guys how to do and use Facebook in pre-season. Now the next thing we're going to do in this video is show you some of the more advanced features of Seasoning. Not tricky, but just advanced features. In particular search, we're going to show you how to set up a, a search. We're going to show you uh, some cool hashtag action and you're going what's a hashtag that sounds vaguely rude don't worry it's not we're going to show you exactly what it means and how you can really use it very well for the 30 day challenge and a couple of other of the the cool features i should point out in the pre-season videos we're not going to show you teach you the marketing strategies of these tools because that's what the 30 day challenge is for we want to teach you how to use them and get you nice and comfortable with them so that when we get to the marketing stuff inside the 30 day challenge then that's what you need to know. I should also say at this point with Twitter is that I don't view Twitter as a platform to make money with. I view it as a platform to communicate with the market that you're trying to communicate with. Uh, and it's a very, very important distinction. Won't go into it now, but I just want to put that out there that uh, I, I think if you went on and you tried to sell stuff on Twitter, uh, you would have a very limited future in Twitter. Uh, you wouldn't have many followers for very long. Uh, so we're going to teach you about the marketing stuff inside the 30 day challenge because Twitter, I believe, is a key tool in being able to understand your market and ultimately become a leader in your market as well. So with that, let's check out some of the advanced functions of Seismic and Twitter. Oh, and of course, don't forget, I almost did, all the support materials, resources, links, transcripts, everything uh, is available at www.30daychallenge.com um, and you can get all the support material. There's awesome forums there. There is everything. So make sure you go and check that out. So we'll speak soon. Have fun. Welcome back and in our final video for now, we'll definitely be coming back to Seismic Desktop and of course Twitter in the 30 day challenge. But as I say, just to keep you going and get you learning, um, I wanted to show you a couple of the more uh, slightly advanced features, basically the way you can communicate with people. So we're back here in our Ed Dale Strat account, which is very cool. And you can see, for example, there are some messages. There's another one from me that I've put up. And you can see here's the here's the one with the URL in it. And for example, this is the twit pick we put in before. If I click on that, a browser will open up. There we are, charming. <laughs> 14 people have already viewed that. It's very impressive. And you can also see, and I'm going to show you how to do this a bit later on, there's some other links that I've done to other cool stuff, for example. So you can just click on that and up it'll plop and your browser will fire up and you'll go, which is very, very cool. Okay, so say we've got a uh, tweet in here from me. Um, okay, let's say, uh, this is a very cool tweet, actually. This was... a. Uh, the thing I wanted to point out about this is not necessarily the photography, although the photographer Joe McNally is amazing, but far more importantly is that he's a guy that knows how to lead a market. We'll be hearing a lot more about Joe uh, soon, but I love the way he describes in this article uh, how he takes these photos. And what I wanted to show you was something you might recognize from my playbook <laughs> is his fantastic diagrams of how this all worked which is just absolutely fantastico. And uh, we'll see much more of this, but it's just brilliant, this and this blog. If you're a photographer, you should check out this as a Joe McNally blog. Anywho, if I think, wow, that's something that I'm interested in communicating about, I have a few options. Let's hover over Ed Dale's head and have a look. The first one is if I want to let Ed know how appreciative I am of getting that, I can click the at. Look what happens. Up pops Ed Dale. 
which is very, very cool. And we've got that there. And I can type a message. Very good. And I can click send and off that message goes to Ed Dale. And Ed Dale, hopefully you'll get it. And if he's not, he might he might even respond. Now, if I want to send a private message to Ed, you have to hit uh, the direct button. Now, the thing about the private messages is the person has to follow you. Uh, sorry, the person that you are sending to has to follow you for you to be able to receive them, if that makes sense. Uh, which which means that, unfortunately, sending a direct message to me is usually not an option because I probably, out of most odds, not following you. But an at message will do just fine. And if there's something you want to speak privately about, just at me and I'll send you an email that you can send that to. Uh, but I find the direct um, feature very good amongst working with teams. And I use it for my teams because that, it also sends me an email as well. So I get, I absolutely make sure I cover everybody from every which way, which is just brilliant. So I do like the good old direct message for teamwork and you might want to implement it for teams. Another, another really cool uh, thing, and let me just delete this out get delete is if I'm hovering over this and I hit this little double triangle here that is the retweet button in other words so it puts the RT in front retweet you might have seen this and you can see at Ed Dale learn effective twittering from Ed Dale splendid YouTube videos Ed when you're in Vermont come and have and it's there's the rest of the link now we can see here that see this gray section just here that I'm highlighting Unfortunately, it's uh, the the post is too long. Now, if I was retweeting, it's usually it's very important to credit where you retweet from. So we need to leave out Ed Dale in, but just doing a little bit of editing is usually quite fine. Um, so, for example, remember I talked about that shrinking text. Let's see how that'll work. That's worked a little bit, not a lot though. You can see it's changed the U to the U uh, R in the tweeting, uh, texting perspective, but we could edit that up and just make sure that it's less than 144 characters, which is very cool. And so you can retweet. And that's often a really interesting thing to do when you're in your market. Again, we'll explain the functions of this when we get to the appropriate point in the challenge. Now, finally, there's a bunch of admin functions. You can favor the item. You can report it as spam if you see somebody that's you know sending heaven forbid Nigerian loan scams or something. Again, you won't have a pro I don't have a problem with spam on Twitter at all because I don't follow. I only follow people I know. It's that simple. Uh, if I don't know them, I won't follow them, and so I never have a spam issue because nobody I know and who I want to follow would bother spamming so it makes sense people only ever have spam problems in twitter when they're following every tom dick and harry when they don't even know who they are very cool to speed up uh, creating groups is adding to user list again probably not something you have to worry about now but down the track it might be useful now follow and unfollow and you're going well follow that seems strange i'll show you where that's really useful in a tick and then there's unfollow, which is if you know I'm annoying you, you click that and you're unfollowed. That's definitely what you want to do. If somebody's being totally offensive to you, and again, this is not going to happen if you follow only people who you know, but if you need to, maybe one of your friends goes feral, who knows, you can block the user and you'll never ever see or hear anything of them again. So it puts... The thing I like about Twitter is it puts all the power in your hand. You choose what messaging you want to receive, when you want to receive it, and so on. And using Seismic Desktop makes that really useful. Now, there's one final thing I want to show you here, which is the search function, which is really, really fantastic. And something that you can play around with right now. And I think, again, if people showed you people how to search properly, that would be so cool. So for example, here I just typed in kickboxing just for kicks. But this is to show you how important Twitter is, you know, kickboxing. You know, you'd hardly think that's mainstream, right? Check this out. Three minutes ago, 33 minutes ago, 36 minutes ago. For the piece de resistance, the final part of this um, Twitter section for now, I want to show you hashtags. And in particular, I want to show you the 30-day challenge hashtag. So what I'm going to do is just do a search 
Now the hash, some people call it the pound key, depending on where you are from and uh, what part of the world you're from. But that hash, which is under the nine key on your most telephones around the globe, it's a little hash or pound, depending on where you're from. And the official hash tag for the 30 day challenge is 30 DC. So anytime I do a post that's related to the 30 day challenge, I put this little hash 30 DC at the end. So I'm going to switch back to my own account here. We'll go back to Ed Dale here. And then I am going to do a tweet, which I'm going to set back to my Ed Dale account here and I'm going to tweet there. And I'm going to say, so I've typed that out and you can see I've added the little hash 30 DC at the end of my tweet and I'm going to hit send. Now, if I switch back to good old uh, my Ed Dale Strat, and this is what you would uh, you would see. Now, it hasn't refreshed out as yet, and that will in a second. In fact, oh, and I didn't show you these. Um, you can hit the refresh to refresh the timeline, and look, there we are. Or you can delete or clear the timeline. In other words, delete all these posts because uh, Seismic sort of acts a bit like a database for you, and it stores these tweets. You can also detach the column so you can have multiple columns. I haven't shown you that feature yet because I want you to be very careful about it initially because it can get so overwhelming. That's what it is. First of all, you can see anytime you've got 30DC, if we click on this, check this out. There is a Twitter search of everybody who's talking about the 30 day challenge and that they've got the 30DC as a hashtag. So it goes through and searches. So it makes it really easy to search for anybody who is talking about the 30-day challenge. So you can have this running permanently in your desktop, and every time you open up Seismic, you can have it working beautifully, and you can do searches. And you can have these searches going permanently on anything. And that is a really, really super powerful part of the whole business, which I think is fabulous. Um, so you really want to check that out. I, I love it. I think it's great. Um, and we're going to show you how to use that to devastating effect inside the 30 day challenge when we're seeking to understand a market. I should also emphasize that remember, you don't need to do any other setup inside of Seismic because all of your usernames are already set up. So everybody that you're following from the first couple of tutorials is already here inside of Seismic, which is very cool. And if you see somebody who is interesting, you can, for example, the amazing 30 day challenges here, Signet May, you can click on that link and click follow and you'll be able to follow. But again, please try not to follow too many people at the moment while you're getting used to Twitter. Otherwise you will get overwhelmed. All right, that's it for Seismic Desktop for now. We'll be revisiting our little friend often over pre-season and in the 30-day challenge itself. It's a wonderful tool, and I think it's really cool. So there you have it. That's Twitter 101. Speak soon.